long bunker shots, you'll see me play a lot of locked, a lot of face open. And yeah, one, by playing it open, you think, oh, I'm not going to hit the ball very far. But the more I play it open, the more bounce I'm putting on. And for me, bounce is the most important thing to create distance in a bunker shot. So even though I'm playing it super wide open, I also have my stance really, really wide. And the other reason I do that is I feel like the narrower I stand, the steeper my angle of attack. The wider I stand, the shallower my angle of attack. So again, more ability to use that bounce and less chance of my club digging in. So it's going to be very wide. I'm going to go a lot more weight on my left side. Now I'm going to be using a different part of the club. I'm going to be really trusty with the leading edge. Again, super wide open. And I'm going to be just chopping down the leading edge right behind the ball. Sometimes that's, that's the way you have to play it when there's not a lot of sand in the bunkers. When you're trying to play a super delicate shot and you sort of like, you know, you're really trying to get under the ball, if you've got too much, not enough sand, the club's going to bounce and you're not going to be able to get that coming out soft. Um, I'm going to play it how I feel is almost a very shallow, sweepy draw feel. I want to feel very connected with my elbows and my body. A bit like the bunker, I'm going to have the ball up, I'm going to have my hands low, but I'm not going to be open. And I'm basically just going to stay very connected. I'm just going to sweep underneath it. This doesn't now offer me that same opportunity. Now I'm going to be using the front end of the golf club. So now, I'm, obviously I need loft. I'm very willing to, to lay it wide open. Now I'm putting 90% of my weight on my front foot. This is a bit more like a Mick, how Mickelson would hear his lob shots. He's way open, weight is way left, and then he really commits to driving the leading edge down. And you say, hey, you know, you've designed it with almost 25 degrees of bounce yeah. on the leading edge. That would give me the confidence to really drive that leading edge down into the ground. So with a bad lie, I'm going weight forward, way open, and driving it down. One thing I've learned not to be scared of, even on a tight line, is so yeah, position one, two, and three. So this is sort of where. So I've always felt that the most important ball position is relative to your upper body, not necessarily your feet. Um, I feel like when we're chipping, the club always wants to lengthen at its so to be at its longest point underneath the left arm or, or left armpit area. So that's the low point. So if I put the ball back my low points ahead of the ball so it's always going to be descending 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 until it gets to my low point which is ahead of the ball so that's a way to guarantee contact so if i want to hit a soft shot i'm sometimes more than happy to play the ball and the, and the low point on, at the same point but i'm happy to actually put the handle of the club behind so position one position one position two with the ball and now just keeping this little connection with my arm, it's turned through. And that's, believe it or not, a lot how Seve chipped there. Uh, was hitting three, four inches behind it. He really? often talked about that the, the, the ground absorbing energy of, of the club. So like we're talking about the sand, the sand slowing the club down. Seve always liked the ball to come out soft and he never relied on spin. He always wanted it rolling in as much as he could like a putt. So he would always go for high land, roll out rather than the low grabby spinner. An approach would be, he's always committing to driving that thing down. He's that hinge it and pinch it. So he's always working that leading edge down. And I guess that's why he uses a 64 degree. His method's very different. Seve would only ever use a 56 degree. Seve could hit incredibly soft shots with just, you know, he'd always be, you know, his whole technique was designed about returning loft, increasing loft of the club, and he would always be really soft on grip pressure. One thing, he would always hold it one or two out of ten, like he could literally chip it and let go of his club. You know, that's how soft he would be in the hand. But anyway, the, the other approach is if you kind of got the heebie-jeebies with hitting the ball, hitting the ground first, um, Phil's approach is the simplest possible shot he can hit is everything off the back foot with a square club face. And it's that hinge and a pinch. 
finish through. And then obviously if he needs to do something different, he will play it front foot, open club face, but still very much the same. Hinge it, hinge it through. But that's all well and good, but the contact, there's, there's no margin for error there. You need to be spot on every single time. I think for me, if you basically, just some principles, like if you want to hit shots that are going to get back to a back pin, I always tend to go long arc. You know, so with the club and my left arm being long, and that, that arc is quite long, that's going to have more energy, more mass on, on, on the strike. So that, that's always coming out quite quick. You know, I'm going to always get the ball back to a, to a back pin. If I'm playing something a little shorter to a front pin, I'm almost feeling like I'm now getting down to it. I'm, I'm cracking the left elbows. I'm making the, the, the radius, the length here shorter so there's less energy, less mass. And, uh, and now I'm gonna be kind of, you know, shortening it even more to get that coming out soft. So just some of the principles really that, that are involved. So when I, when I putt traditionally, I'm, I'm very sensitive. I, I feel every little tiny movement in my stroke and I start to nitpick my stroke way too much. When I, when I put this grip in play, I, I felt like it sort of uh, calmed down all the sensations that I was feeling a little bit and just made everything a lot more simple up here. Oh, so I don't, I don't fight the stroke as much. I think that's the most important thing. But um, so yeah, obviously I, I, I get in there this way, but the reason I tucked the shirt in last week is that I felt like I was beginning to steer it a little bit. I, I felt like I was beginning to, push my hands yeah. out a little yeah. bit too much so just by popping this here just yeah you know, i wasn't jamming it in but it just kind of gave me an incentive for my chest and my upper left arm to work in, in rhythm together and mm. that felt like it just really helped the release and the flow of the stroke mm. cheap pretty cheap training aid <laughs> <laughs> And then as I walk into the putt, I'm building that picture back to the ball. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what my, I'm kind of aware of where the ball is and I'm building that line back. I then sort of quiet my eyes down on the ball. I then, uh, I feel like I'm, with the back of my putter, it has like a channel. So I feel like I'm laying down a bit of a, a tube or a channel just <coughs> off the first couple feet. So this little clear area, it pretty much is the width of the ball. So I feel like I'm just laying down like a little starting tube, really, like that's what the ball is going to start down. So I don't really consciously aim the putter, but I, I, I set my tube, is what it feels like. And then I send my awareness to the hole, and then I track my eyes down the line to the hole. Awareness back to the ball, eyes back to the ball. And now the key is, my eyes are staying dead still on the ball, but my awareness goes to the hole, and I'll react to that. <laughs> 